Hey there, friend, and welcome back to my kitchen. I am Sarah, and this is Brown Family Goods. Today, I am doing something that is going to be so delicious. It's going to be a skillet chicken pot pie. And not only are we going to make a skillet chicken pot pie for our dinner tonight, we're going to double that recipe and make one for future me as well. This is a simple recipe to make and a super simple recipe to double up. That way, I have another one to throw in the freezer. In addition to the skillet pot pie, we're going to top that chicken pot pie with a sourdough biscuit. So today I've got a good amount of sourdough discard that I need to use. So I'm going to be making some sourdough biscuits, a double batch of those as well. That way we can top our skillet pot pie and also have plenty of those biscuits for the next time we want some. So I also have something special on today's video, and that is a collaboration with a friend of mine, Carrie at Keep It Simple DIY. She is going to be making a sourdough recipe. However, she's going sweet with hers. She is doing a sourdough brioche cinnamon twist. Oh my gosh, it looks divine. Check out her channel quick. Hey everyone, my name is Carrie. I'm at Keep It Simple DIY, where I like to film videos about cooking, pantry challenges, saving money, gardening, and so much more. I'm making these amazing brioche cinnamon twists today. So I'd love to see if you'd hop on over after you finish watching this video. See you then. Does that cinnamon twist not look delicious? I think we're definitely gonna have to try that and now that I see her recipe for that. I know not everybody does sourdough, but these recipes are easy sourdough recipes. I'll be sure to leave you a recipe for just a regular biscuit recipe, not sourdough. And in fact, this recipe doesn't get the lift from the sourdough starter itself because we're using discard, not active bubbly sourdough, um, but it gets a good flavor. So let's get started on these biscuits, you guys. These are very basic ingredients. And the first thing that we're gonna start with is some frozen butter. And it's important to use frozen butter because you want these biscuits to be super flaky. So I just pulled this from the freezer. I've got my grater here. I actually think I'm gonna grate onto my, um, I think I would rather grate onto my uh, wood board here and then I can put it in my bowl. But uh, that's gonna be a little bit more stable for me. But I'm just gonna open up the, butter here and get it grated. You can use the largest side on your box grater, or you certainly could pass it through a food processor or something like that. You just want to work with it quickly so that it stays as cold as possible. So I want to make a double batch of these biscuits, as I mentioned before, because I want to have plenty for my skillet dinner, and I also want to have plenty to cook up whenever I want them. So this will give us lots of biscuits to throw in the freezer. Biscuits freeze up great. So I'm going to show you towards the end of this video how to cook these in your air fryer from frozen. The air fryer works perfectly for cooking up biscuits. This is a sourdough recipe. I'm going to leave the link to a plain non-sourdough recipe in the description below. And the thing that this sourdough really gives is just a flavorful biscuit. Not that regular biscuits are not flavorful, but this is going to have that yeasty flavor to it as well and a little bit of tang from that sourdough discard. You know, if you have a sourdough starter, many times you are looking for some kind of way to get rid of that extra discard. I don't typically have that problem because I use my starter every single week to cook for, to make breads for the farmer's market that we participate in. So I, I usually only save about a quarter cup of starter every week and then I build it right back up. Every Wednesday, I start to build up my starter again for that next market and bread baking, but uh, this is one cup of butter. Again, I'm doubling this recipe, so the recipe calls for half a cup, and I'm making double. This is one cup of butter that I have shredded here, and I'm just gonna put that in this bowl, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw this butter back in the freezer while I get the other ingredients measured out and ready to go. Now, maybe this wasn't such a good idea because I've made a buttery mess of my cutting board here, but. Okay, so we'll just throw this in the freezer while we get the other ingredients put together. Okay, so let's mix together the wet ingredients first, and that's just going to be buttermilk and the sourdough starter. For the double batch that we're going to be making, we need uh, one cup of buttermilk. So we'll add it in first. And then for the other wet ingredient, is that is the sourdough starter and we're gonna use two cups of sourdough starter. See my starter here, and it is bubbly, but it is not in its peak activity. So I had to feed it last night because I, didn't, I needed to have enough, of course, for today's recipe, but it's not as active as 
what you would want for bread baking or something like that. So this is perfect. This is just the right stage for this. And I should be able to just pour up in here um, two cups. So this is a half cup measure. And that still leaves me plenty of starter in there. There's probably a cup yet of starter in, in there that I can feed and work with going forward. So I'm just going to mix together the culture, the uh, buttermilk and the sourdough starter. And this is our wet ingredients. And now we can get our wet and our, excuse me, our dry ingredients measured out. I am going to sift the flour that I'm using for this recipe. For my flour, I'm just using all purpose flour. Um, you don't need a self rising or anything like that. This recipe calls for two cups. So I'm doubling. Woo! I'm doubling. So I'm going to use four cups, two, three. There's three. Let me get this down a little bit and one more. And then this does have some leaveners in it as well. Baking soda and baking powder. And I'm going to add that right in here. That way it can mix through with the flour. Baking powder, two teaspoons. So I'm gonna add four. Okay, well this is where my microphone went out, but I was not aware of that. But we're just gonna continue on with the voiceover instead. And I'm gonna continue adding in ingredients here. And this is some baking soda going in. The full recipe for these biscuits is on the website Damn Delicious, and I am going to leave the link for it below, of course. Now goes some salt, and then finally in goes some sugar as well. It's just a very small amount of sugar, so it doesn't make these sweet, but it'll add to the caramelization of them and give them a nice golden brown color. I just like to sift those ingredients because sometimes the baking soda or the baking powder can have some lumps in it, and certainly the flour can too. Now in goes that super, super cold butter. And you just wanna work with this all as quickly as possible. That way the butter stays nice and cold. And I'm also just using a spoon to toss this together rather than my hands, because even the heat of my hands would make this butter soften up. And then finally, we'll just mix in the wet ingredients to the dry. I'm just going to be careful when I mix all of this together not to over mix it because anytime that you add liquid to flour that is what starts to cause the gluten to develop so you want to really stir this as little as possible to get it to come together and not overwork the dough that way the biscuits don't become tough and this these turned out so fantastic so I know that I did not over mix this this dough at all so you just want everything to be moistened and then we can continue to work this together once we uh, lay it out flat. So you'll see me wearing gloves here and that is for no other reason other than I just don't love to work with dough without gloves on. <laughs> I just really don't. Something about it, and I work with dough every single week, but I always like to wear gloves when I do because it's just easier than having it under your nails and every, you know, crevice on your hands and having that sticky feeling. So I like these uh, vinyl kitchen gloves. So I just use them whenever I work with dough. And all I'm doing here is pressing this dough together. I'm trying not to knead it or anything like that. I'm just giving it some pressure. And then once I have it all kind of flattened out, I do a couple of folds, as you saw there. And that's what creates those really flaky layers. So I'm just going to press it down with my hands and then I'll grab the rolling pin to get it rolled out to about, it says about one and a half inch thickness. You could go thicker or you could go thinner. They still will be really flaky and nice. Just depends on your preference really. So I'm just being careful again with the rolling pin not to overwork the dough as well. The shape of this doesn't really matter as long as you can get your biscuits cut out. So I have like a, I think this is a two inch biscuit cutter 
And that's a good size for a biscuit, not too small, not too big. Use what you have to cut out the biscuits. You could even go square and just cut them with a knife into some squares. That works too. A biscuit cutter does give you a nice edge and that's what causes the biscuits to rise up really well and have that flaky appearance. And then I'm just pressing the dough back together. You don't want to uh, mash it. You don't want to add a bunch of extra flour. Just press the dough back together and then you can cut out as many biscuits as possible. Those just go straight into the freezer while I'm doing this other things. And I just wanted to show you the ingredients here for the chicken pot pie. That is some chicken breast, about one and a half pounds. I cut up about three russet potatoes, peeled and cut those up and put them in water while I'm waiting to cook them. Um, a couple of onions, a few stalks of celery, about four or five carrots, some frozen peas, those can wait, and that'll be some flour and seasonings for a little bit later. And then I'm just gonna cook this chicken first before I do anything else. Go ahead and cook it, and that way I can set it off to the side while I make up the rest of the dish. All I did was just sear the chicken and cook it. You do want to go ahead and cook it through though. And I just put some butter in the pan, seared the chicken and cooked it through until it was nice and browned. And the bottom of the pan is nice and brown too. So that'll add a lot of good flavor. Okay, so straight away after I get the chicken out of the pan, I'm gonna add a bit more butter in. And then we're going to get these vegetables in to start cooking now. Onion, carrot, and celery, and this can all go in together. And we'll just start to saute this down until it begins to get softened. And you can see the color coming off the bottom of the pan already as everything is going to release its liquid, onions and all of these veggies. I do need to turn this back up. I had turned it down just a touch. And we'll let this start to saute down and soften up. Things that I wanna add in here are some garlic. This is about three cloves of minced garlic. Now the recipe that I'm using, it called for a lot more garlic than that, but I don't like, in a, especially in a chicken pot pie, for the garlic to be overwhelming. I like for it to be more of a background note, so I don't use as much in something like this. And next up, I'm gonna add some seasonings, salt, pepper, thyme, and then I have some rosemary that I picked from my own, uh, from my rosemary outside, and I'm just gonna throw in the sprigs like that. They can come off in there, they can not, that's gonna be fine either way. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt just to begin with. When it comes to making the gravy later, we may need to add a bit more salt. And about half a teaspoon of pepper. And the ground thyme that I'm going to be using, I think I'll add about a teaspoon of it. If you have poultry seasoning, that's really good in here too. I just realized I'm out of poultry seasoning, so I'm using thyme and rosemary instead. That's basically what poultry seasoning is. Maybe a couple other things, but we'll start with this and see how it tastes. Since these potatoes are in water, I'm gonna drain these now and then we'll add them to the pot. Okay, this is smelling so good after the addition of the herbs. Already it smells delicious. The next few things to get on hand, I'm gonna let these potatoes and veggies cook now for about five minutes just to get the potatoes to start to soften. And then we will start to build the gravy in here. Okay, so for this portion of the recipe, I think in order to build the gravy, it's gonna be better for me to remove the veggies from the pan. Since I have such a large amount during this double batch, I'm gonna go ahead and pull everything from the pan here into this bowl, most everything. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. Then I can start to build the gravy using the butter and flour and make the actual roux. And then I'll add the vegetables back in once I have the uh, gravy started. So I'll just take everything out for now. And if you just set it off to the side, as I said, the pan doesn't have to be perfectly clean or anything. 
I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to work with this big of a batch. And in is gonna go one stick of butter. This is the start of our roux. And in order to make a gravy, you have to make a roux. So that means a fat, some flour, and then some liquid. That's basically what the gravy is. You just wanna have this on a medium heat in order to make your gravy. And I like for my gravy to do half milk and half either water or stock. So I'm choosing today to use chicken stock that I have um, canned on my shelf in there. So I just grabbed a quart of it and I have a quart of milk as well. You can do more milk or less milk. It's totally up to you, but I prefer to do about half and half. So I'm gonna add about a half a cup of flour plus two tablespoons. I just don't think that the recipe that I'm looking off of calls for only half a cup of flour. I don't think that's gonna be enough for as much liquid as we have. So I'm gonna use what I use, a half a cup plus two tablespoons. And so you'll just mix the flour and the butter together here in the pan. And this is what is called a roux, flour and fat. So for a gravy, you don't want a very dark roux, but you do still need to cook this flour a little bit. And that means probably about a minute or two on a medium heat just long enough to start to toast up the flour without browning it. Now, if you were making something more like a gumbo or a brown gravy or something along those lines, um, you, you just keep on cooking this, this flour and butter or flour and fat, whatever it is that you're using until you get it to the color that you like and that you want your dish to be. But for me today, I'm just doing a nice light roux. It doesn't have to be too dark, and it's gonna make a delicious sauce. This is a reused jar. My neighbor gives me these jars. Most of the time, the label it stays on perfectly, so I don't mess with it. It doesn't affect the canning of it or anything, So, and it doesn't even come off in the pressure canner. That's how good of a label it is, so. <laughs> I just leave it be. If it hasn't come off on its own, I don't try to peel it because that's something that is just a frustrating thing, right? Okay, so first I'm going to add in the um, broth. I'll put it in first, and I like to use a whisk because you don't want any lumps. Try to keep it as lump-free as possible and just slowly add it in, get the lumps out, add a little bit more. You can see how this is coming together. Now, if you add in extremely cold milk or extremely cold broth all at one time, to your flour, that's when you can have a lot of lumps. So you want to just kind of go slowly, let the broth heat up as you're adding it, and just keep whisking. Don't stop whisking. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be having to uh, bring the immersion blender out and blend all this up to get the lumps out. So just keep whisking, whisking, whisking. This is looking good. We can turn the heat down a touch too. I'm going to turn it down to about low heat. That way this doesn't get too, too thick, too fast on me. Okay, so we've got the broth in and now we can add the milk next. I wanna make sure that I have all the flour off the bottom. And now the milk. Now I'm using lactose-free milk, that way it agrees with everyone in my family. If you don't want to use milk, as I said, you can start, you can just use all broth or you can use all water. Add in a little chicken bouillon cube or something like that. But as I said, I'm using this um, lactose-free milk. That way there should be no complaints from any of my people. So we'll turn the heat back up just a touch and we can add these vegetables back in as well.
Yum. No. Okay. Let's see how we're looking here. Yum. Oh my gosh. This looks so good. So for my dinner tonight, I'm going to do this in my cast iron skillet. Now, if you were making a single batch of this, you would make this all in one pot and then just put it into the oven, top it with your biscuits. Now, since I'm making a double batch of this filling, that's why I'm needing to put it into a separate pan. For the second meal portion of this, you can do one of two things. You can go ahead and put it into whatever pan it is that you're going to be using to cook it in down the road like a, a Pyrex dish or casserole dish, you can go ahead and put it in that, wrap it, double wrap it in plastic and then foil over top and freeze it in the pan. I don't really have room for that in any of my freezers, so I'm gonna put mine into a gallon Ziploc baggie and then freeze it flat. I'll just basically thaw it out and then put it into whatever casserole or skillet that I'm gonna be using the next time that I cook this. So this gravy is looking really good now. It's starting to thicken up nicely and it's to a point where I can go ahead and pan it up. And then we're gonna put it into the oven to cook for just a little while before we top it with the biscuits. Because the biscuits will go on for about the last 20 minutes of cooking. And then, um, but this needs to cook on its own for just a little while in the oven, get this nice and hot and bubbly in the oven. And then we can put the biscuits on last. First, we need to taste this and make sure that the seasoning is okay. Um, I did a quick taste, but let's check it out now that it's boiling hot. Good. Let's taste it and see. It may need a little bit more salt. Okay, yeah, I think it needs a little bit more salt. Probably some pepper too. It, it tastes, it's almost there. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon more of salt and about half a teaspoon more of pepper. And I think it'll be just right because it is gonna cook down a little bit more, so you don't want to oversalt your pot pie filling. Because as things cook down, especially in the oven, you lose liquid, so that means that the flavor becomes more condensed, and that means it's gonna become more salty. I have my oven preheating to 400, so I'm gonna get this into the skillet, and then into the oven at 400 degrees, and I'll cook the Skillet portion, the chicken and gravy portion of this, I will cook for about 15 minutes first. And then I will add the biscuits for the last 15 or 20 minutes of cooking. So, yum, yum, yum. Okay, I'm just gonna use a measuring spoon to, or a measuring cup to add this here. I find that easier than a ladle most of the time. This is something that we don't mind eating leftovers of. <laughs> we like a chicken pot pie, um, so this will be really good. I'm just gonna add one more scoop here. Yeah, this looks great. And then depending on how many you are feeding, honestly, I may divide this into two. No, I'll just do one more because we like leftovers of this and that'll be fine. So this will be another pan of uh, chicken pot pie for me. All right, this one is gonna go straight into the oven. This one is definitely gonna to need to cool down before it can go in any kind of freezer situation. And I usually actually like to cool this kind of thing overnight in the refrigerator and then freeze it. That way things don't get really frosty when you put them in the freezer. If you put them in straight from hot, then they tend to get more frost on them. I'm gonna save some for that other one. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't have the topping on yet and I can just easily mix them through. <laughs> oh my gosh, you peas, you didn't even say anything. <laughs> I can't forget the peas. It's my husband's least favorite part. But I love them. 
Okay, look, it even looks better with the peas in it. Come on, man, don't forget the peas. All right, you guys, back into the oven with this one. Now with peas. have a few more minutes until everything comes out of the oven and then the air fryer at the same time and that's gonna be perfect because I can do a side-by-side -side comparison of the biscuits on the chicken pot pie and the biscuits from the air fryer but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to show you how to cook those biscuits in your air fryer because I think the air fryer is just the easiest and best way to cook most things especially when you're two people you don't want to always turn the big oven on for like three or four biscuits so this is such a simple way to cook the biscuits in the air fryer so if you follow those instructions that I gave you there, I think you're gonna have the best success with them. Before I get too far into my taste testing here, I did wanna remind you one more time about Carrie over at Keep It Simple DIY. I think you will definitely find something to love over on her channel. She has varied interests just like I do. And don't forget, she's making those delicious sourdough brioche cinnamon twist. Don't forget to pop over to Carrie's channel as soon as you're done here watching my video. Anyway, let's get this stuff out of the oven and give it all a try. Okay, check out the biscuits from the air fryer. They look so good. Check out the flaky layers. I know you're going to love these. And all we did was just grate up butter and then push the biscuits together. I mean, that couldn't have been easier. These ended up going at 340 degrees, 10 minutes, flip them over, and then do another five minutes. Now that is the biscuits from Frozen. So you might want to, um, if you're baking them up fresh, you may have to reduce the time, the second round of baking just a little bit. So here we go, I've opened one up. I'm gonna put butter and honey on this biscuit. So I'm super excited to try the biscuits now. Plenty of butter, you gotta have plenty of butter. There he is. And then we also have to have plenty of honey. <laughs> Yum, oh my gosh. Look at how great that looks. Okay, let's dive in. Mm. It's so flavorful from that sourdough. It is the most flavorful biscuit. You will not regret using your sourdough discard in these at all. And do you hear the crunch? Wow. Okay. Why have I not been making sourdough biscuits this whole time? Don't sleep on these, these are delicious. I'm gonna eat the rest of it. That sourdough flavor, it's so good. You're gonna love that. If you try it, you're gonna love it. Okay, I better get this pot pie out of the oven now. Wow, look at this, <gasps> so good. Okay, I've got my biscuit pot pie out here. Look at how tender and flaky those biscuits are though. Wow, they came out perfectly in that um, gravy. All right, let's see how it is. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. That sourdough biscuit just adds so much to the whole dish. It just had so much more flavor than a regular biscuit would. It's remarkable. 
this is a winner. So it's definitely worth the work to make it once and eat it twice or three times. If you could divide it down even more than do so, you could probably get four batches. If it's just the two of you and you're only making small batches of food, you probably could get four meals out of this. And then once you go to cook it, you just add on ever how many biscuits you want to towards the end of that cooking time. Or I don't know, the air fried biscuits are something, something else. So you maybe just cook it up like uh, biscuits and gravy and then top your super crispy biscuits with this gravy, with this chicken gravy. Uh, you have options is what I'm gonna tell you. Um, <laughs> you've got options with this. And I know that I am a convert on the sourdough biscuits at this point. Um, I am sold on those. So I'm glad to have my freezer stocked up with those. I'm glad to have them for supper tonight. So definitely give this recipe a try. I hope you love it. And I appreciate you coming along and spending some time today with me in the kitchen. So I hope you'll go over and check out Carrie's channel after you leave here. And I appreciate you visiting with me today. And I'll see you back here again real soon. I did end up portioning up two more bags of this rather than making it one more portion because I think that this is gonna be plenty for us to make two more dinners out of. If I need to, when it comes down to cooking it the next time, I probably could add a little bit more chicken to it just to bulk it up a little bit further, but I think it's gonna be, it's definitely enough of the chicken gravy for two more meals. And then I'll just top it with however how many biscuits I need for that night and it'll be perfect, so. Two more meals into the freezer.